How's it going YouTube? Jamie the Kid 0 here, coming at you guys with a brand new machine and gadget deck list for the new format for September 2013. Um, I should probably say in this video, this video is recorded on a Friday, but it will not be published on YouTube until about Tuesday, uh, following YCS Toronto. So if this deck has any similarities or is awful against the meta that will probably be established by YCS Toronto, I'm sorry, but I'm going to be away during this week, so all of these videos for this week are pre-recorded, as you will have seen in an earlier video. But either way, this is the list I've come up with. Um, it's got a few interesting texts, because I've been trying to put interesting texts in every deck I build so far um, for this new format. So this is going to contain a few, and I'm going to talk about them, and we're going to see what you think of them. Otherwise, we're going to get into the deck profile right now. So I've never, I, I haven't played gadgets that much. Uh, I'm not that knowledgeable on this deck, so I should probably say that some of the things I may say may be a bit silly, and if you're more interested in a more knowledgeable player talking about about gadgets, please go check out Uzumaki Kunai1, who is going to be in the description below. A link to his channel will be placed there, along with the deck list for this deck. And um, if you would go check out his channel and watch his version of this deck, um, I would greatly appreciate it. So we're going to start the list off with two of each gadget. Now that we don't have ultimate offering, three is just not an option. Three is just a, a, a bad option, otherwise these guys are going to clog really hard. The one problem this deck has is either not finding this, or finding more than one of this in its opening hand. Ideally, you want to just be finding one. So you play six gadgets. I then play three copies of Tin Plate Goldfish, or Tin Goldfish as it's now called. Um, Tin Goldfish is great in tandem with your standard gadgets, because you can go uh, Goldfish, Special Gadget, search another gadget so you've already made back one of the cards you've used, and you're then able to exceed into Gigan and get back a, uh, get a search, so you've basically gone minus zero, but you've got a monster, so a plus one, so it's a, it's a nice play. Um, so we have the three tin goldfish. We also have the three copies of Machina Gearframe. Machina Gearframe is in here to search out our boss monster of the deck, Machina Fortress, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and also his zero defense points are actually going to be relevant for one of the first times ever in this deck which you'll see in a minute due to one of my techs. But I just thought this card was... Uh, I thought I thought the Machine Engine was still incredibly relevant. I really like it. And the ability to make Dracosack off of these bad boys is always good fun. I'm playing two Machine Fortress. I felt the three would clog at the moment because I'm playing a few non-machine targets, so I thought three would be a bit heavy-handed. You only really need two, especially now that we have access to Redox, the Elemental Dragon of Earth. Um, I just like the two fortress. Um, and another card I'm playing which is going to be questionable is Machina Force. I'm pl I'm aware that Machina Cannon is a card. I'm also aware that Machina Cannon can be deck dev And in a format where almost every deck can play deck dev and will more than likely be playing it to try and kill Mermail, um, I'd rather have a card in this deck which I can draw which won't be hit by deck dev. And there's another card in here that won't either. But I feel that by playing Cannon, it means that if I get Deck Devil, I can't revive my Fortress at all. But if I play Force and I get Deck Dev, I can still revive a Fortress and I'm still in the game. Even though I will have lost all my gadgets and things like that. So that rounds off our machine component. That's all the machines for the deck. The rest of the deck is comprised of some rather interesting things. So something that you've probably already seen many times before is two copies of Kageto Kage. Uh, Kageto Kage is in there. For the sim for a similar reason as um, I forgot its name now as uh, Tin Goldfish, it's basically for turning your gadgets into Exceezers as fast as possible because you can go summon a gadget and then special summon Kageto Kage and still get the search off the gadget, and it just means that you're constantly getting your your plus ones back. You're not you're never really using your resources and you're trying to push for advantage over your opponent, um, and it just gives you easy access to an Exceez monster, which is the basic premise of this deck. And then we play a couple of colourful one-offs in the form of Redox, because this deck is majority Earth, so you're basically playing an, a new monster reborn, and it's also a 7 that can special summon itself in defence if it has to, because it has 3,000 defence points, which is very difficult for most decks to get over, and it's also able to special summon itself with Fortress on the field, and exceeds into either a Draco Sack or a Big Eye. Then one card, which a lot of people won't really be testing in this deck, but I'm actually trying, is one copy of Mask Chameleon. What Mask Chameleon does is he's a reptile tuner that can't be normal summoned while I control a level 5 or higher monster. So if I have Fortress or Redox, I can't summon him. However, when he is summoned, I can use this effect to special summon one monster with zero defense from my graveyard. Now you know why I was talking about this. And that monster's effect's negated. 
I can then, and then during that turn, I'm not allowed to special summon except from the extra deck. So I can then use the Mask Chameleon and the Gear Frame to either exceed into a 4 for one card or Synchro into an 8 for one card. So it's, it's pretty good. It's something that I'm trying. I'm not sure how I feel about it just yet. And we'll kind of see how things pan out. And then the last two cards, I'm playing a two Trigodia because you need Trigodias to stop the OTK. Like, you're playing traps in this deck, but some OTK pushes are playing traps on nowadays. And Trigodia has always been a strong strong card in this deck because almost every card you play gives you another card back. So you're always kind of at four to five cards in hand. The spell lineup is fairly sim very simple, actually. Um, there probably should be dualities in here, but at the moment I've opted out of the dualities to play a few extra monsters and, a few, and, an, and an extra trap, so... For now, there aren't any dualities in here, but for those before people start commenting saying where are the dualities, they were definitely considered and they definitely considered going back in. But at the moment, I'm testing a very trap heavy variant, so I mean, if things are always subject to change. So the spells are one dark hole, one book of moon, and my spell tech is an iron call. This is something that I'm trying just because mid, mid game, or at least after the first turn, if you've lost a gadget, you can say summon one of your guys get a search, and then special summon the dead gadget or the dead something from the grave and make an exceed, make it do, make, go for Gigan, and at least it gives you more tr more ways to make Gigan when you don't have your tin goldfish. It's something I'm trying, it's been, uh, sometimes I've opened it and it's been meh, but other times when I've had it late game with just a gadget in hand and I've drawn that, I've been pretty happy to see it, so it's been good. Uh, I'm then playing Double Lance because you want your big summons to go through, you want your Gigant summons and your Fortress summons to go through. And uh, the best part is, like, now that um, Mirror Force and Deep Prison are such big cards, uh, if you attack with um, your Gigant, so no, your, not your Gigant, your Fortress, uh, even if they Deep Prison, you can Lance and crash the Fortress into the opponent's monster and the Fortress will still kill the monster by the effect. So it gives you ways around that, and it also gives you ways for your gadgets to actually kill stuff by battle. And then the last tr spells I'm playing are three copies of Mystical Space Typhoon, because you want to be able to try killing back row, which is kind of big, this format. All the rest of the cards in the main deck are traps, and I believe this main deck is 41 cards. So we're playing three copies of what I feel is one of the biggest traps of the format, Fiendish Chain. Um, I'm not playing Vela in the main, as you saw before. I just like this card because of its staying power, how long it lasts, and the fact that MSTs are such a precious commodity now. Some people aren't going to MS people aren't going to MST this as often as they used to, in response to the activation of this card's effect. And I felt that having the three meant you got three Phoenix change to the three MSTs, so these are going to be going through. Um, I then play two D Prison because it went to two. Uh, but I'd be playing two anyway, I'm not really sure why I went to two, but I guess people would have played the third in, in place of the bottomless. Uh, the double mirror force, and then five one-offs in the form of Compulse, Bottomless, Torrential, Solemn Warning, and the Tech Trap, Pinpoint Guard. Pinpoint Guard is in here for the very fact that when your opponent attacks, you can revive, say, a gadget, and that gadget will be able to get its search. So it's a very versatile card in this deck, it just gives you more ways back into your rank 4 exceeds. This is basically rank 4 exceeds spam. The way I'm trying to play this is basically rank 4 exceeds spam. Uh, continuing on onto the extra deck, I don't have a sideboard for you. I might put one in the description below, but I don't have a sideboard built. Um, this extra is very up for changing. I want to cut an exceeds for a Crimson Blader, but at the moment I haven't. But bear that in mind that Crimson Blader probably should be in this extra, but at time of building this deck, haven't managed to cut something. So I'm playing two Gear Gigant X. You don't need the third. If you, you you should never need to make a third one of these. Two is the perfect number, so two Gigant is in there. Uh, then our Gigant for Reptiles is King of the Feralimps. King of the Feralimps is in here because we would be signing Repti Reptilian Vasky for decks that would make Dracosac, which because it's a very powerful out to Dracosac. It's also in here because it's able to search Kageto Kage and our Masked Chameleon. So it's able to search us into our Chameleon, which can make our level 8 synchro plays, if we should need those synchro plays. Um, I'm then playing the one Utopia, because it's Utopia, it's a good generic. Uh, the one Maestroke, one Direwolf, and I'm going to say this now, because loads of people have been commenting, and it really upsets me. You don't have to have other Beast Warrior target, or Beast, beast Warrior or Wing Beast targets in the deck. Diamond Direwolf is its own target for its own effect. If it wants, if I have to, I can go Diamond Direwolf, well, if I have to remove a monster from field, I can make Direwolf 
target itself and the opponent's monster and kill them both. Diamond Direwolf is only in this deck to kill something that I have to kill, where I have to go minus to kill it. I don't have to have other targets in the deck to play this. This is just kind of an escape button. This is my Black Rose, if you will. So it, it just it just frustrates me when people are like, why are you playing Direwolf? There's no targets for its effect. It's its own target. Um, then we play one Digusto Emerald for putting our gadgets back in the deck because we don't have Avarice anymore. It's probably one of the biggest hits this deck took. Avarice getting banned, because Avarice is really good in this deck. So that's a sad face, but Emerald's in there. Uh, the one Photon Paploperative, because it's good. Uh, the one Gaga -Ga Cowboy, because 800 for game is a bitch. Uh, the one Abyss Dweller, because this card is huge at the moment. Like, going in against uh, plants, zombies, and mermails, this card is great. Absolutely great. And, like, yeah, dragon plants, zombies, mermail. It just shuts them all down, so I really like it. And then, because Evil Swarm is still a thing, we kind of have to play the Gemini Pearl just to deal with the Ophion, because Ophion's huge for this deck. Uh, and then I play two rank 7s in the form of uh, Big Eye and Draco Sack, because I felt they were the two best rank 7s. And then the two level 8 synchros I play are one copy of Scrap Dragon and one copy of Stardust Dragon. But there probably should be a Crimson Blader in here. Maybe the Stardust Dragon could come out, or maybe an Xyz. But for now, they're in there. But yeah, that brings us to the end of this deck profile. Um... It's been something new for me. I've never actually played gadgets before. I did a little bit of testing with this, but probably not enough to actually warrant doing this deck profile, but I felt that you guys would enjoy it. I haven't had that many requests, but this was just something that I was looking through my decks binder and I felt, hey, there's a there's a gadget deck in here. I should probably actually build that and record it. But otherwise, yeah, this is me, Jamie the Kid Zero Zero. I hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time with some more Yu-Gi-Oh! related content. Peace out. Bye.